First of all, I'm French. Sorry for my accent and my English. Feel free to make fun of my accent and my mistakes, or to correct me, of course. I read an excerpt from the book by Jean-François Revel called The Anti-American Obsession, released in 2002. Jean-François Revel is a French journalist, expert in philosophy and literature, who lived part of his life in the US. I've read many books by Revel. Uh, he was, uh, back in the past, one of my favorite authors. Uh, this book is not my favorite of him. Actually, it's one of the ones I like least, <laughs> but uh, it's still pretty good overall. By the way, my favorite book of Revel is La Grande Parade, released in English under the title Last Exit to Utopia, if you are interested. The passage I'm about to read made me laugh a lot. It's hilarious. This is the beginning of chapter 5, uh, entitled The Worst Society That Ever Was, and it describes the image that the Europeans have of the United States. It's a bit of caricature, but it's essentially true. If you do a poll on the street, no one will tell you what I'm going to read to you, especially if you are American. But living in France, I can tell you that's about it, especially for people who have never met any American in their life. The translation is mine, so if there are mistakes, and I'm sure there are, uh, I'm the only one to blame, of course. So let's go. What picture of American society can be engraved in the mind of the average European? Especially if he is French, he has little choice, given what he reads every day in the press and the media, in the writing of the intellectuals and in the speeches of the political leaders. First, it is a society entirely governed by money. No other value, moral, cultural, human, family, civic, religious, professional, ethical or intellectual exists by and for itself. All these values are related to money. Everything is merchandise, seen and used exclusively as mar merchandise. An individual is only estimated based on his or her bank account. All presidents of United States are sold either to oil tankers or to arms traffickers, to the agricultural lobby or to Wall Street speculators. America is the perfect jungle of, liber of libertarianism and wild capitalism, of course. Then, and consequently, the rich are more and more rich, and fewer and fewer, while the poor, on the other hand, whose crowds grow up, become more and more poor. Poverty is a dominant plague of the United States. There are hungry hordes of hungry people everywhere, among whom circulate the luxurious limousine drivers with the opaque windows uh, of the billionaires. This poverty and inequality is legitimately hated by the U European, especially since, in US, as it is known from reliable sources, there are no social security, no unemployment benefits, no pensions, no help for the most deprived, nor the slightest solidarity. The American believes firmly the European because his elites repeat it to him every day, enjoy no social security. Only the rich can get treatment, since there, for doctors, as for all other Americans, only profit is sacred. The rich are also the only ones to be able to study extensively, since you have to pay to go to university. This explains the very low level of knowledge in, in the United States, a dismaying level, since the elementary and secondary teachings are notoriously bad. Another typical vice is violence. It reigns everywhere in America, in the form of a crime unique in the world, and also in the quasi-insurrectional constant favor of the ghettos. The latter is inevitably the result of racism which is in the heart of American society, and which, on the one hand, opposes the ethnic communities to each other, and other, on the other hand, the minority ethnic groups to the majority of their white oppressors, the unforgivable cowardice, which is certainly doubled by greed, which has always held back political leaders to prohibit the free sale of guns, periodically leads to the horror that teenagers only go to school to open fire on their teachers and fellow students. Another universal conviction is that 
all these evils are less likely to be cured by the fact that Americans make a point to elect only mentally retarded presidents. From Truman, the quote, Missouri tie seller, unquote, to the congenital creature of Texas, George W. Bush, and by the way, Carter, the quote, unquote, peanut seller, and Reagan's B-series actor, we contemplate in the White House a real gallery of profound, of profound morons. However, in, all, in our eyes, emerged from this ridiculous head John F. Kennedy, probably because he had the merit of being buried, married to a woman of French origin. This union naturally raised him to an intellectual level, let's say, moderate. But doubtless, still too high uh, for his fellow citizens, who have never forgiven him since they have murdered him. Anyway, no one ignores that the United States is a democracy only in appearance. The American political system revealed its true, its true face in McCarthyism between 19, 1950 and 1954. It doesn't matter that McCarthy was disapproved by the American conservatives themselves and that in December of 1954 the Senate censored it by 67 votes to 22, which definitely removed him from political life. It still remains the quintessence of the regime created by the 1787 Constitution. Moreover, Europeans prefer to ignore that the House, um, the House and American Activities Committees was created in 1937 to fight against the, Klu the Ku Klux Klan, considered an anti-American organization, because the Klan also refused uh, the constitutional contract, which is in the heart of the American system. You have also the verse repeated in our, in our medias about the Hollywood soap opera of the election of November 2000, which presupposed that Hollywood had only produced only bad movies. Uh, for sure, anyone will find confirmation in any serious uh, history of uh, cinema. Such nonsense reflect more the psychological problems of those who uttered them than the flaws of the society that they imagine to accuse. Despite the increasing dissemination of information and the decreasing cost of travel since 1970, the absurdities prevailing in the command, uh, the commons' judgments about the US have hardly been corrected, and differ very little from those which have, which I had already drawn up in a catalog in my other book without Mark or, or Jesus. We shall never cease to repeat it. Every society has its own faults, even its ignominy. It is permissible for any observer to describe and condemn them. Still, it must be true. So you can tell me in the comments if this is fair. Uh, if you are Noam Chomsky or Michael Moore, you may find uh, this is fair. Um, anyway, I wanted to read just another uh, piece of the chapter. Uh, it's uh, at the end of the chapter. By the way, if I may add timidly an additional remark, we must believe that the tens of millions of foreigners who have been settled in the US for a century and a half from many parts of the globe, and in particular the 35 million, mostly European, who went there from uh, 1850 to 1924, uh, we all, were all complete stupids. By what illusion they persisted generation after generation, to leave the countries of Cocagne, peace and freedom, where they were born, to get lost in the American jungle, where, if we believe what the European medias print every day, are waiting for them only poverty, racial discrimination, growing inequalities between the rich and the quote-unquote disadvantaged, uh, inhuman submission to capitalist profit, the total absence of social protection, permanent human rights violations, the dictatorship of money, and the cultural desert. How could those Europeans who have been unconsciously misled into the American hell not write to their families and friends who still swam in the happiness of the Ukrainian, Calabrian, or Greek paradises not to come and join them? 
and how, 50 years or 150 years later, are Vietnamese, Koreans, Chinese, Mexican, Sal Salvadorians, or even Russians blind enough to fall in the same trap? The descendants of the old generation of immigrants have nevertheless had, had to explain to them that the, their ancestors had found in the US only poverty, insecurity and oppression. One can understand that the American dream, quote-unquote, uh, has fooled the first arrivals. But if this dream is only a lie, one cannot understand, on the other hand, that the bitter disappointment of the pioneers didn't further deter their successor from following the same path as they did. History mentions another dream whose uh, mystifying nature quickly became obvious and which promptly spared more applications for, for departure than for integration. That's why, uh, if the American melting pot is such a bankruptcy, we are surprised not to see whole crowds flee the US to settle in Albania, Slovakia or Nicaragua. Okay, this is it. I also wanted to read something else. In a YouTube video, there was a debate in the comment section uh, between French and Americans. And as usual, the French uh, said shit about the Americans. For instance, a comment uh, which says uh, in uh, French, uh, les Américains tous des, fais tous des FDP, which means the Americans uh, all son of a bitch, get uh, eight thumb thumbs up. I'll just read you my own comment. I am French. It is true that the average French has a bad image of the United States and Americans. But it is also true he will always deny it. He is not anti-American at all. He simply thinks that there are uncultivated fat people with guns who are only interested by making money and who oppress the world with their empire, uh, their fast food and their dumb movies. While in France, we have social system that the world envies us. We are cultivated. We read books, not like in the United States, where there is no books, uh, no theater, no opera, no art uh, subsidized uh, by the state. And we don't touch money. You see, it's uh, dirty. We are thought very young that the United States is the country of violence, inequality, unculture, money king, and we grow up with this idea. If you're French and you like America, it means you are not very intellectual, you see? Okay, unquote. Uh, and also I forgot to add that the French people see the US as a country uh, dominated by the Christian religion, a country that is not secular, contrary to us. <laughs> and if you wonder why, uh, ask in the comments. And finally, the last point I can say about the image they, that uh, Europeans have of uh, Americans is that they are very bad in geography because they don't know where is France on a world map, for example. Of course, any French know where is United, where, where is, uh, United States uh, on a world map because it's a big country, but very few of them know uh, how to situate a particular state from US on a map. So we come uh, to the end of this video. I can testify that all this is true because, well, I myself believed for years to this image of the US when I was young. Obviously, uh, it's a generalization. Not everyone thinks that, but yeah. If you are interested in the topic of French anti-Americanism, um, there is another book on the topic I uh, can give you. I will give you more details in the description. Of course, if you enjoy uh, this video, don't hesitate to subscribe, to comment, etc. Thank you for watching.